hello and welcome to another episode of design with pam today we're going to be designing this performance dashboard show the total revenue sales growth acquisition then the sales report like the performance here you could see the total gain you could see the churn rate the product performance itself and we could see real-time sales and top performance right so i'm going to let you in on the reason i took certain decisions while designing this dashboard like the reason i chose this color um this color for this font the um the reason i chose this other color for this font you know just my thought process all together so let's get right into it okay so the first thing we're going to do is to get our frame here so i'm going to click on this drop down and i'm going to choose frame and i'm going to go to the desktop drop down and i'm going to choose desktop right so let's title our frame to dashboard design right so i'm going to go ahead and change the, the color of this dashboard the color i want to be using here is somewhere close to white but it's not white right because i want to use a lot of white as the other frames on the dashboard all right so this is the color i'm using you can see it's near to white but when you place white on it it still has that distinction that sharp distinction okay so the first thing i'm going to do is to create this menu section here and i'm going to go back to take a frame here and i am going to drag the frame here and i'm make sure it's to the end of this and I'm going to give it a fill, add a fill. Automatically, the fill comes as white. But I want the width of this frame to be a 276. I think we're good. All right. So remember, if you've watched my previous UI design tutorial, I always advise to put on layout grid. And you can check my settings from other tutorials. So for dashboard, I'm using this grid here so again another thing i did for this frame here that serves as a place holder for our menu i added some stroke here so come to this place and click on the plus sign and i change the color to f4 f5 f9 all right so it's not so there but it's there let me close the grid line so you can see it all right it's somewhat there you can see it when you zoom in so i just want it to be there right so the next thing again is to get our logo i'm going to take the logo that i have here i'm going to copy it and i'm going to select the frame itself and i'm going to click on command v so that it paints exactly where it was here all right so moving forward okay so if you don't know how to get or get your free um, logo to this platform just go here click the drop down go to file and click place image it takes you directly to your files and you can import image to figma all right so i'm just going to click on t on my keyboard to activate the test tool and i'm going to type performance dashboard So I'm going to, this is the title of the page, that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to increase the font to a 24 because I want it to be very prominent. And I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to go ahead and increase the width, um, the weight of the font to be um, a bold. I need it to be a bold. So for the letters, um, letter spacing, I gave it a 3%. I added a 3% spacing to it. So if I didn't add the 3% spacing, this is what it will look like. But I wanted it to have a different kind of feel. So I went to play around with that section. Right. So I'm going to try to align this here. So, so if you want to know the spacing you have between this item and the top of the dashboard, 
of this frame the main frame the parent frame just select the item itself and then hold on to alt or option key and you can see the spacing so from the top there we have 58 we can make it a 56 it's fine right so i'm going to go back and put on my grid line right so the next thing i'm going to do is to work on this section here though i have a tutorial where i showed how to arrange this section but i'm going to go ahead and just do a quick one here for the sales report i'm going to click on t on my keyboard and i'm going to type sales report that's the first item you see there which is more like the title of whatever you have going on here so this is a sales report right you can see the dashboard the mm, sales funnel and all of that so but i'm going to change the font here the the font color i'm going to give it a nine a nine a nine right now i'm also going to leave it at bold and i'm going to leave it at 18 but i'm going to duplicate this and i'm going to write dashboard that's the next item we have here so what i'm doing is since this one is going to serve as the title to whatever other options i have down in the menu right i i need to like differentiate it with the rest options right so if i don't differentiate it let's say you have dashboard here you have report it's going to look as if they're the same item but we need to make that distinction so that's why i kept it here so for the other ones other options i'm going to still use a darker color same color i've been using here but as you know from my previous lessons i don't like using pure black so i'm going to use this color which i've saved here but this is the color you can check out my other tutorials All right so you can see the color here to copy the color code okay so next thing we have here is um so how many items one two three four five six six items so i'm going to select this one hold on to shift and select the other one and i'm going to create an auto layout by hitting shift a you know i like doing things very fast i'll always find the, an easy way so rather than copying and pasting these things one after the other once i create this auto layout i'm just going to select this one and i'm going to click on ctrl c ctrl v and i'm going to keep on clicking ctrl v till it pays the amount the number of times i want it to we've not added our icons right then i'm going to give it a spacing of 32 i think 13 2 is okay how many page one two three four five six six items so let's give it more spacing let's give it a 48 okay so another thing you should notice that we have not added our icons here so i'm going to go ahead and ungroup this and i'm going to right click on my mouse and i go to plugins i'm going to go to hero icons so for dashboard let's see this icon we save as dashboard here but let's go to iconify so iconify you can easily type a word and it brings the particular icon but not like hero icon you hardly get that okay so we have something here so i'm going to import it now okay see pasted here all right so i'm going to take this and i'm going to copy select the both of them create an auto layout and i'm going to give it the spacing of 24 i think it's good but because i also don't want to do it twice i'm going to go ahead and delete all those ones because i didn't add icon to them before i duplicated i'm going to duplicate this by holding on to option key and dragging it down then i'm going to select this hold on to shift and select the other one and click shift a to create an auto layout so the spacing should be a 32 i'm going to go ahead and select just this one and click command c command v and i'll keep clicking command v till i get the number of things i want i need it to be all right this is two four six one two three four five six seven all right
so i'm going to go ahead and make increase the space in here to a 44 i'm going to select this one to and create auto layout but i'm going to reduce the space in here to 18. right let's leave it left aligned so we practically have almost the same thing going on down there we have settings here and we also have just two items so i'm just going to copy out what we have here same we have been doing and you know it's easier to make edits with things that are similar right i'm going to select all of it and then give it spacing of 18 to and i think we're good so between this one and the logo that we have here i'm going to leave it at i'm going to leave the spacing at the spacing is 45 let's make it a 48 and i'm going to zoom in and make sure that this is aligned to this grid line here Okay, we're good. So between these two, the spacing, I'm going to, let's give it a 48. All right, so I clicked here. So I think we're good. So the next thing we're going to do is to create a section here. But I have another tutorial where I created exactly this. So you can copy that. You can go check out the video. But one thing I want to show you is that I, I use a line. I clicked on L on my keyboard and I held on to shift and i drag this all the way so i'm going to use this color here take the color picker and select this color that i have here just show to show that so you know that um the logout section is always like at the bottom right so i don't want you to mistake these items here the items that i have here i see if it's another item here they're not like related this one is logging out this one's at the items that you can click on to perform maybe to see an action on the dashboard but that's why i use the line to like form um, a more definite indication not just pacing here okay so i'm going to try to reduce your opacity just a little bit so let's see the spacing between the two okay 64 is great so far so good let's put on a, let's turn off our grid line so we see what we have done all right so i'm going to try to create an auto layer with this two and i'm going to try to make it align it vert not vertical i think it's horizontal yeah <laughs> horizontal alignment oh this is not in the frame so why this one didn't react the way it is is because it's not in this particular frame right so i'm going to take it and then i'm going to chuck it into the frame and i'm going to go back and align it horizontally all right so this one is aligned too so we're getting there the next thing we're going to do is to create all those cool things that we have going on here so i'm just going to hit f on my keyboard to drag a frame but i'm going to give it a few color immediately so you can see what i'm doing but this frame i'm going to give it a width of 238 then for the height it might not cover let's give it a spacing of 223 then for the height let's give it a spacing of 156 all right so for the corner radius i'm going to just let's leave it at an eight i think we're good so what do we have going on here we have total revenue the amount i'm just going to copy the amount here because i have the naira sign so i'm going to click on t on my keyboard to activate the text box then i'm going to write total revenue so most times we use the size of the font the color of the font to emphasize to draw emphasis on certain things right so for this one the total revenue is a heading for the actual total revenue this is the total revenue 
which is 20 million but where do you think the emphasis should be on the title or the amount itself yes on the tight on the amount itself right so i'm going to go ahead to remove so much emphasis on the word total revenue so i'm going to reduce it to a font 16 and i'm also going to change the color i'm going to change the color to the color that we have been using here which is this so but so that we don't go about co copying this color up and down i'm going to add it to my library by clicking on this plus sign i will name it brown for dashboard okay then this one is good as it is 20 as it is um up it's i'm using a font of 20 and i'm leaving it at bold i'm going to take select this one select the second one and create an auto layout but give it a spacing from from here to b4 just four they're related items so the spacing should not be that much i'm going to click r on my keyboard and draw a, a rectangle here but i'm going to leave the width to be 191 and the height should not be Let's just leave it at 9. So I'm going to round the corners up to 100. So you remember we have two colors going on. One that shows that more like an indicator, right? Two, maybe your total revenue is somewhere here. Maybe you have a target as, up, as above more than that, right? So what we're going to do now is to go ahead and hold on to while we select this rectangle itself we're going to click on command c command v on it if you come to this lay um this um panel here by your left you can see that there are two rectangles now so the one on top i'm going to select it and i'm going to go ahead let me zoom in and position my mouth around it the mouth is going to turn horizontal like this then i'm going to drag this one all the way down right but while i do this i'm going to go ahead and change the color for the one on top i'm using this yellow color this is the color code i'm using then i'm going to also give this one the same color however i am going to go ahead and reduce the opacity and we have that already so the next item we have we have this two um 80 slash month maybe showing the number of transactions you 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 carried out in the months maybe 80 for that month right so another thing is so that you won't leave users guessing what this whole information you have going on here you can also put a two tip here so when a user maybe clicks on the two tip the the description a short script description will pop up to see what is actually signified right so i'm going to go ahead and type t on my keyboard and i'm going to write 80 slash month so i'm going to reduce the font to a 14 so for this one for months i'm not i don't want to lay emphasis on the word month i'm going to take it to um regular i'm just selecting it and i'm changing only that one the font weight to regular then i'm going to go ahead and select the color that we have chosen back then and i'm going to leave this one as bold 14 yes so the next item we have here is more like telling us the percentage that we have let's say 8.9 percent i'm going to change the color to green so why i'm changing the color to green is if you remember the icon that i use shows like a progress like a a growth level like it signifies maybe there's a growth right so you can either change it to be um i can change it to be like same maybe this color or i can choose it to be green since is an up a growth something that shows growth so i don't know why i keep going to hero icons because hero icons uh let's say trend all right hmm, that's cool 
just when I am about to shade your icons. So what I'm going to do, it, remember from my last videos, I told you that these icons, they come in a frame, but I like taking out the vector out of it and then deleting the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce this um, icon. I want it to be like proportionate to the percentage value here. So I'm going to reduce it to like say 14. Then the stroke, I'm going to leave it at one. It feels too thick. I'm also going to keep this to be green. Right. So I'm going to select the board and create an auto layout. The spacing in between should be a bit of four. Then I'm going to select this and select this, create an auto layout and make sure that they are aligned very well. All right. So I decided to add this green because it's not like a growth. Like maybe you've done 80 89 percent above what you were doing or something like that all right so another another way we can look at it is let's say we use this color to re represent um total revenue right your revenue and we also use this color to represent sales growth and we use this color to represent acquisition so we might decide to use the color that represents that particular action for this growth in percentage stuff but again i think i would prefer or i would suggest that we maybe use green red to indicate maybe there's a growth or maybe there's mm, we had a downward movement in our trend right so that was the kind of shift of idea that i had going on so but i'm going to select this and i'm going to hold on to option key and i'm going to duplicate this and duplicate that so I'm going to select all of them, create an auto layout, and I'm going to make the spacing with the 32. All right. So another thing we are going to do is we're going to create this total performance indicator. So what I'm actually doing right now is I am not filling up this information. It's going to be like a take home tags that you can do on your own. Just copy out the designs that I have, the words that I have here or anything that you feel is suitable for a project you're working on and fill up the information then you can also copy out this other places and fill i think i have given you a guide on how to do this one so you can also fill up the same thing and use for this section all right so the next thing we're going to do is to create this um, top performance board that we have here cut that we have here so i'm going to click on for my keyboard and i'm going to drag a frame and i'm going to give it a feel but before i do that i'm going to go back and put on our grid line so that we know what we're doing remember that everything has to be in place i can see that our our this frame here is going off our grid lines so i'm going to go ahead and reduce this space in here to a 24 because i need more space then i'm going to go ahead and reduce this here So I'm going, yes, 292 for um, the width is okay. But for the height, I'm going to give it a 256. 256 is fine. Right, so let's go and give it a title. Just click T on your keyboard and give it top performance. Performance. So for this top performance, I'm going to leave it at, I'm going to make the font 18 because I want it to be bold. And I'm also going to give it the same color that we've been using, non-black. So let's try to position it very well. Let's say the spacing from the top should be, let's give it 24 for starters. From this left hand side, let's give the spacing a 16. All right, so I'm going to click on O on my keyboard and I'm going to hold on to shift and create this shape here. So for this shape here, you know, we also have some other information down here, as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I am going to try to. OK, so maybe we should increase it a bit, maybe. So the reason why is and the shape is increasing like 
in a definite way or in a proportional way is because i'm holding on to my shift key so they're actually up to six colors here one two three four five five colors and we're going to create them so what i did here was i came to this arc here i point i clicked on this arc here and i dragged it down i wanted to create a space here so after doing that i came to the middle one and i dragged it out so this is where you determine the you, the width like the size you want it to be how wide you want it to be then if this is okay if it's not okay you can drag it a bit now then you can go ahead and close this one all right so the next thing again is to why still selecting this shape here you click on command c command v to add another one on it so you can see from this layers panel here that they are now two right so i'm going to click on the one that is on top and i'm going to go ahead and come to this place where you see sweep 100 and i'm going to reduce the the size but i am going to give it a corner radius of 10 just to have that effect then i'm going to do the same click on the main shape and command c command v take the first the one on top make sure you select your you select the one you just duplicated and then come again and create another shape here try to make sure that it's not so you can find you can see it better if we change the color so let's go up use our color picker and choose the colors that we have here so for this second one let's choose this color okay so for this third one here this third one let's also round the corner and let's change the color to green then let's let's copy and paste duplicate the, the main frame again think we have something close to what we have but when you're doing yours make sure you make sure the weight here is bigger because mine do this one i created here looks a bit small but we're going to make do with it we're going to go ahead and click o on our keyboard again and then create another shape in the middle here but for this shape i'm going to change it to white i'm going to change the color to white then i'm going to go ahead to effect click on the plus sign here and then add a bit of effect for this x side i'm going to leave it at zero for the y side i'm leaving it at one then the blur effect i'm giving it as much as a 20 and i'm leaving the color to be as black and percentage as 25 right so i'm just going to copy the test that i have in here you can type the test yourself make use of the same i um the same tactic trick we use for this one it's the same one you will use for this particular one okay, i just copied the wrong thing here just going to try to align it properly i think we're good so the next thing we can do now is to create this section here all we did was to create a tiny rectangle click on r on your keyboard and then create a tiny rectangle so click on t on your keyboard and type microwave Try to reduce the font to a 14 because we don't want it shouting, you know. And also the weight of the font to be a medium. Alright, so we're going to copy, select this one, select the tiny rectangle and create an auto layout. Let's leave the spacing between them to be hmm, uh, a 4 is okay. 
right so the idea behind this is like i'm trying to tell you which of the item is doing where and all that so let's say this microwave is is this pink color so you can see the amount of space this pink color is occupying right that means it's actually doing better than this one that is like blue but overall which one is doing better right you don't also want to leave the users guessing another thing you can implement on this design is that when a user maybe you can call out the number write out the number the percentage on it so and again when a user hover around over around it overs around it the percentage is shown or better still the percentage is right there so this dishwasher in the middle maybe signifies that maybe dishwasher is the winner so i'm going to reduce this and i'm going to make dishwasher the winner so i'm going to change the color here to this so that you know that the orange here signifies dishwasher so that is how we achieve this place i'm selecting the boat and i'm creating an auto layout and i'm going to duplicate this and i'm also going to create this select the boat create an auto layout and then give it a spacing of eight then i'm going to center it so one thing i'm going to do is to select everything here okay so i went to i'm going to select everything here by holding on to my mouse and dragging i'm going to right click and group all the selection because i don't want it falling apart when i've done this i'm going to try to go to this alignment section oh it's not even it's not in the frame so the reason why once i click on this alignment is because it is not aligning to the to, it's going to align to the frame where it is and obviously is not on this frame this frame here look at it here so you can see that this group i created is outside of the frame so i'm going to take it in and chuck it back into the frame and i'm going to go back and center align it's actually in the center then i'm also let's just take it up a bit okay and the space between the two let's give it a 12 and i'm going to create an auto layout for it also create an auto layout with this one then let's align it in the middle let's see the spacing we have yes i think it's fair but before we forget let's give our frame a corner radius of 10. so let's close our out grid layout grid lines and see what we have done so far so remember another take home work for you is to fix this side all right so you can actually fix this side but let's change the color it's too shouting for me we can go and choose the color that we have okay feels a bit better but we can also reduce the font feels like it's just everywhere so let's leave it at regular All right but i think it's still too shouting so i'm going to select try to select all of it i'm holding on to my shift key while i do this whole selection i'm going to reduce it to a 12. let's reduce this to to a 12. so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to remove the auto layout so that i can place these things very well remove the auto layout that's i'm ungrouping it now and I'm going to center this here. Let's reduce this font too. Let's center it. Then create our auto layout. Create our auto layout and then center it. So we're good. Perfect. You can fill out this section now change the microwave to whatever suits whatever you're designing and all that but now you can see how to represent let's say a performance board right so the next thing we're going to do is to create this other section or should i give you as a tax what do you think <laughs> all right so we're going to create the sales report section here the first thing we're going to do is to click f on our keyboard And we're going to drag 
here. So let's leave the width to be 716. Well, let's give it 716. But let's add the fill color so you see what we're doing. And for the height, let's give it a 284. Oh, don't worry. I've already... The spacing between the two, 32 is great. So let's create the other frames here. While the other frame here, let's see what we can give it. Let's still leave the width at 716. But let's try to increase the height a bit to 324. Okay, so I'm going to create the other frame here. Click on F on your keyboard and drag. Add a fill color. Then for the width, let's give it a 292. It's going to be the same width as this one here so that everything is snapping. But for the height, let's give it a 532. So I'm just trying to arrange this. Okay. So let's continue. So I'm going to go ahead and populate this section now. So I'm going to type real time sales. I'm going to leave it at 16. Let's give it a 16 because it's more like the title. Then we're going to move it to semi bold. Then I know we have view all. I just duplicated view all here. But since this is not our main uh, message here, I'm going to reduce it a bit. Take back the fonts um, to regular and I'm going to change the color we have been using here brown all right then i'm going to increase it because the font is a bit down yeah this is what we've been using all right so in as much as we have this view all thing and you assume that users are going to click on it so what i have noticed from conducting a lot of usability tests is that especially if it although it kind of depends on the um on the on the customers or the market you're designing for right i know you might think that everybody is um tech savvy but trust me a lot of people have designed for people in stock trading investment real estate and they're all kind of have designed for um customers in uk in nigeria here but let me focus on nigerians here so a lot of people let me use stock trading for instance a lot of people think that um, people are very knowledgeable when it comes to stock trading and utilizing the online platforms to buy and trade stocks right right so they're struggling truth be told you think that because you wrote view all here that someone is going to click it because yes normally me me as it someone that is tech savvy i'm going to click it obviously right but they don't know and they are going to leave it leave it like that i have designed a dashboard for securities and people were kept on saying that they didn't know how to start trading whereas the flow was once a user clicks on let's say stocks right the next thing shows you list of stocks that you can buy under categorization and all of that but still people said that they didn't know how to start trading that was the feedback from the usability testing so you need to listen to the users so what we, what i did at that point was that i on the dashboard itself where you have stocks or when you click on stocks right i, I had to put the card that bully says start trading maybe when you click on that then you now know that the next page which we actually have given you right before now actually means that you can start trading trading from that point so it's always good to do some usability testing on some things that you have designed just to know if users are going to click on it so that brings me to the reason why i added i i added this um button here so i'm going to go ahead and change the color to the color that we've been using i am going to go to plugins go to hero icon and find this this icon here so i'm going to just bring it out from the frame i'm going to bring out the vector from the frame and delete the frame 
so i'm going to chuck this one in here but i'm going to go ahead and reduce the and change the color to white let me align this very well and i'm going to click on right click on my mouse and group it all right right so what i'm going to do is to or create an auto layout with this to put this one here click on this put this one here and create an auto layout so i like being that detailed so the next thing we have we have name and id and we have amount So I'm going to click on T on my keyboard and I'm going to just type my name. You can find me on LinkedIn as Pamela or Hiring. So because um, this is a heading, right? And we left it at semi-bold. This one is also on bold. But is that really what we... Should we really emphasize it as much as that? I'm just going to reduce it to regular. And I'm going to go here. Put ID on. Let's put an ID. And I'm going to give it an ID. But I'm also going to change the color here because I don't want it to be dragging for attention with this name. Remember, I don't like using black. Not black. Not black. Right. So, this is me changing the colors of the, the text. So, as I said, I think I've shown you this earlier. This is a color code. You can copy it here from here. So let's go ahead and group this. Select this, select um hold on to shift and select the both of them. Click on shift A to create an auto layout. The spacing between them four is great. So I'm going to go select this text here. Double click into this frame and select this text here. I'm going to hold on to option or alt key and I'm going to drag it out and I'm going to add my amount. Let's say 20 million. I like money. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and increase the font of this one. Let's give it an extra bold. Let's increase the font a bit to 16. All right, so I am going to... I've created an auto layout. Let's put back our grid line so we know that we are working within some kind of space. I'm going to center this. Okay, so let's click on O on our keyboard. Hold on to shift. Let's create the frame that we have here. Real time sales. So this real time sales might be giving us cue on um, maybe the people that are making the purchase or what we're buying, right? What we're selling. Oh, sorry. This is what we're selling that I represented here. So let's change this to microwave. All right so figma is telling me that i didn't spell it well so once you click on it right click on your mouse and figma will spell it well for you all right so we're going to put a picture of microwave here so let's go to pixels and let's type microwave all right we we'll just choose anyone that we see here so I'm going to choose select this frame here this frame that i've already created and select this other one and click shift a to create another auto layout then i'm going to go to this alignment section and i'm going to center it but the spacing here i want it to be a six or an eight and it is great all right so i think we have achieved that so the next thing is let's try to duplicate this but before i do that i'm going to put a line just to differentiate the items click on l on your keyboard and then drag a line so i'm going to use the color that we've been using here this color here let's see but i'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity so i'm going to detach it from my variables then i'm going to go ahead and reduce the opacity then I want this and this to be together. I'm going to select the both of them, hit shift A, and then go and reduce the spacing here. Let's give the spacing of 14. Let's say 12. All right, so I'm going to duplicate this, select the both of them, create an auto layout too, and the spacing between the both of them should be at least an 8. Then I'm going to double click in it, select the first frame we have going on here 
copy and paste so i'm going to keep clicking on command v or control v till i paste the right amount i want right so let's close our grid line so we can see what we have done so far right so i think we're good but i think i overemphasize this amount here what i'm going to do is to reduce the font let's reduce the font to a 14 right i think i'm good fine we've created here but again you remember we must align everything so i'm going to select this first section here hold on to shift as i selected this one i'm going to create an auto layout right the spacing is a bit much so i'm going to give it a 32 wow we're good i think this is fine so you can go ahead and make edits to this place add any product you like maybe dishwasher um drying machine any of that all right so for this whole section here we're going to do it just right now click on on your dash on your keyboard and type sales performance i think that is what we titled that section let's see sales report this is sales report while the other one is product performance right so we left it i'm leaving it at 18 bold fine perform product performance don't worry we're going to align them very well the next thing that we have going on here is the sales growth and the monthly the sales growth and the revenue so just hit on your keyboard and type sales growth But I'm going to reduce this to a 12 and I'm going to make it regular. I'm going to hit R on my keyboard and draw a small rectangle. For this rectangle, I want it to be, uh, let's see, width should be an 11. Let's also give the height an 11. Right, so we're going to change the color now to this color. I'm going to select the both of them and create an auto layout. The spacing between them should be at least four. Then we're going to duplicate. So the next item we have here is the filter. I'm going to just, this is monthly. I'm going to type monthly. Then I'm going to create hit shift A on my keyboard and I'm going to come to this horizontal padding. I am going to reduce it to let's give it an eight for starters. Then the vertical padding, I'm going to give it a four. Then I'm going to corner the radio just a bit, let's say a four. Then I'm going to add stroke, but I'm going to use this our brown color that we've been using. I'm going to reduce the stroke width to let's say if. 0 0.5 okay that's fine then i'm going to go ahead and bring an icon a drop down icon that shows you that they could filter they could change this all right we have this so remember i want to remove the vector from the frame it came with and i'm going to chuck it in here so once you chuck it in here it gets it gives the spacing it creates room for it because it is on auto auto layout but the spacing between the object inside the frame the auto layout frame is this we can reduce the spacing here to be let's give it a six then i want to also reduce the icon that i imported to be like proportionate to the to the to the text that i i wrote right so i'm going to click on this constraint proportion and i'm going to reduce this to an eight i think this is okay but the stroke is too much so i'm going to reduce it to one and i'm going to also change the color to not black not black and i'm going to change the color to not black too 
and you too i don't want to black so let's go ahead and arrange all of this put this one here but let's put on our grid line so we see what we're doing so this one i'm just going to allow it to start from the top let's give the spacing from the top a 24 from the side a 38 is okay i'm going to create an auto layout between with these two The spacing should be at least let's give it an 18 then i'm going to select the board create another auto layout i think it's good select this create an auto layout because i want them to be positioned very well i think we're fine spacing from the top let's align this yes we're good so the next thing we're going to do is to create this this trend thing this graph that you're seeing here so I'm just going to click R on my keyboard and drag a little frame, a little rectangle here. I'm going to make the width, let's say 32, right? This is too much. So we're going to round the corner to just an it, right? Then let's change the fill color to the yellow we've been using. Then let's duplicate this i'm just going to like create different height so for this revenue here i'm going to reduce the opacity of this yellow to 64 just to show that wherever you have that particular yellow it is um the revenue why where you have the deeper yellow that is the sales growth so i'm going to do this but you know i like easy work so i'm going to select all of them and create an auto layout then click on one and click on ctrl c and ctrl v just to paste it we have 10 2 4 6 8 10 going on here but what i will do again is that i'm going to go ahead and reduce the sizes for all of for some of them just to create that feel of a trend Right, then I'm going to select some colors and I'm going to change them. I'm going to change some colors here back to to represent sales growth. Let's give the space in the 32. I think we're good. So the next thing I did, let's close our grid line so we see what we're doing. The next thing I did was the lines that you see going on here. So I'm going to hit L on my keyboard and I'm going to drag a line. But before I do that, no, let's drag the line. Let's drag the line. Okay. Let's change the color to brown for dashboard. And let's go ahead, detach the style and then reduce the opacity. But this line here, I want it to be in stroke. So I'm going to I'm going to go to these three dots you're seeing here and come here. And then click the drop down and select dash. Right, so the I'm going to create the numbers that we have down here. We just have these numbers here. 10, 95, January, February. I'm just going to copy this and paste here. Let's paste it here. Let's bring it down. All right. So the font I use for this section is I used um, font 12. And I use, you can use the same color that we've been using since the brownish color. You can use it same place. I'm just going to copy out the number that I have here too. And I'm going to paste it here. So um, you can add this text yourself. I use a font 12 for this section here. 
okay so the next thing is show you how this line is going to be you can see i will just add all this lines here i'm going to duplicate this but if it behaves like you just come here and click on absolute position then drag it where you want it to be i'm going to work on it work on it work on it So I'm going to go ahead and select all the lines here. I'm just going to duplicate one more. Select all the lines here. Apologies. I'm holding on to my shift key, which is important. And I'm going to go to this place, distribute horizontally. All right so i'm going to also right click and then group what i did so that is how you achieve this well today i'm going to leave you to a task right on how to achieve this section here there's only you already know how to achieve this line thing that we have and you also know how to impute this section but i need you to figure out how i did this so I'm going to give you a bonus. Actually, it's a vector that is here. I use a pen tool to create the shape. But this is how I manipulated it for you to get these smooth edges. And that's how I feel the color. But I need you to make an attempt, right? Make an attempt and you can send me a DM on my Instagram. This is me, Pamela. You can find me on Instagram as Pamela the Designer. Send me a DM with your Figma design and I can give you feedback on it. And if you also want me to do a tutorial me a comment on the comment section all right and if you found this video helpful please subscribe to my youtube channel this will really encourage me so the key things just so we summarize the key things for you to do take home is to add this this thing we have here that shows that dashboard has been is highlighted or is selected you can make, make adjustment and tell me why you adjusted it to what it is right we could use different ways to show that a particular tab has been or is highlighted all right so yeah then you can fill up this session because i use this dummy test dashboard dashboard everywhere so yes that's yes that's the take home assignment thank you for coming to design with pam episode today see you next class